commitment to youth skill acquisition programs. An embracid assembly resumes plenary after election. Federal government holds national dialogue on education. Israeli settlers attack six Palestinians in occupied West Bank. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and welcome to the news. My name is Uche Chuku Ibonam. Governor Chukuma Saludo has reiterated his commitment to empowering Anambra youths to become more productive. Governor Saludo gave the assurance when he declared open a two-day workshop for Entrepreneurship Development Institute on the One Youth, Two Skills Entrepreneurship Scheme in Oka. Government House Correspondent Valentine Madola reports. who spoke through the Commissioner for Youth Development, Mr. Patrick Aramba, said that the One Youth Two Skills Entrepreneurship Scheme will prepare Anambra youth with the knowledge and necessary skills to contribute to the development of the state. The governor who noted that One Youth Two Skills is a productive empowerment structure designed to make Anambra youth employers of labor called on all young people resident in Anambra who desire to build honest and value-adding enterprises to take advantage of the scheme. The goal of this program is to redefine youth empowerment so that they can contribute economic development of the state in the years to come. The Vice Chancellor, Nandaziko University Oka, Professor Charles Simone, urged the Entrepreneurship Development Institute that had been selected to ensure the impact positively on the participants to enable the One Youth Two Skills Initiative achieve its purpose. In any society where youth programs are not targeted at the youth, also that society also does not flourish. So what we are doing, we are speaking to the root, the needs of the community. And I'm happy that all of us are all partners in progress in this scheme. Also speaking, the director of Unizik Business School, Professor Ema Okoye, said that the business school will issue certificates to all entrepreneurship development institutes who successfully go through the workshop, as well as youth trainees who successfully complete the entrepreneurship training program afterwards. On his part, the chairman, Nigerian Association of Small and Medium Enterprise, Anambra State, Mr. Chinemeremo Ogwebe, who is part of Entrepreneurship Development Institute, assured of meeting the expectations. The special advisor to the governor on youth empowerment program, Dr. Nelson Amenoga, who also addressed the gathering, said that one youth two skills entrepreneurship scheme is laudable and timely and urged the youth of the state to key into the initiative to become self-reliant. He wants no youth to be left behind. He wants, uh, irrespective of where you come from, whether you are, provided you, you are in Anambra and you are youth, that you should be, you should have equal opportunity to those that are the two-day training, which has been organized by the Ministry of Youth Development in partnership with Namdazikiwe University Business School, is in line with the agenda of Governor Saludo in producing 1,000 youth millionaires and creating 130,000 private sector jobs annually. In Oka, Valentine Bada reporting, Fabius News. An Ambra State House of Assembly has resumed plenary after some weeks of break. House of Assembly correspondent Trigger Makanamo Adalim reports. The Speaker of Anambra State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Ute Okafor, while welcoming members of the House back to legislative business, congratulated his colleagues who were re elected in the March 18th House of Assembly election. Right Honorable Okafor extolled Governor Chuku Masoludo for providing an enabling environment for the election to hold peacefully without violence. He observed, that the election was peaceful as the electorate voted without any form of intimidation. Uh, we congratulate everybody, uh, those that uh, made it and those that didn't make it. We we'll say a big congratulations to everybody. Um, our happiness is that uh, the election went peacefully in a number of states. So we say congratulations to everybody and to all of us for coming back to our offices uh, safely. 
on his part. The deputy majority leader of the House, Sir Emeka Afoka, also expressed gratitude to God for granting the lawmakers that contested the election the grace to participate in the election and came out alive, as well as his constituents for voting massively for the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, during the election. Most importantly, I'm entirely grateful to God Almighty that we are alive today with sound health. So I want to congratulate all of us for the wonderful exercise. Everybody who campaigned and uh, participated actively in the exercise did very well. The House later adjourned sitting to the 18th of next month from the State House of Assembly to Kwemeka Modelem ABS. The chairman of Anambra State Sports Development Commission, Honorable Patrick Oyedum, has assured of accelerated sports development under the administration of Governor Chukuma Soludo. Honorable Oyedum, while speaking in Oka, said the governor had broken new ground in all sectors, including sports, under one year. We have details. According to Honorable Oyedum, Governor Soludo demonstrated his love for sports through prompt release of funds to sponsor 149 man contingents to the 21st National Sports Festival in Delta State, in spite of the lean financial resources available, and the team took part in 21 events and won a total of 39 medals, including 6 gold, 9 silver, and 24 bronze medals, a record he described as the best in the state's history at the festival. While a member of the team, Ujungwa Wanwo, a female karate fighter got an invitation to represent Nigeria at international championship in Canada in April this year. He said Anambra State also took part in the National School Sports Athletics Trials in Abiokuta, Ogun State, where 16-year-old Fiako Eze Chuhuchiri emerged champion of the high jump event and qualified to participate at the World School Athletics Championship later this year and expressed confidence that Anambra State would soon become a viable sporting arena with the development of Anambra State Sports Solution Initiative ASSI as the special purpose vehicle for driving sports in the state with robust private sector involvement. Honorable Onyedum disclosed that the Sports Commission has signed a sports financing partnership deal with Bruneo and Winston, a consulting firm to implement sports development programs under ASSI for four years in line with Governor Soludo's desire to encourage private sector involvement in sports, while the state government has given consent to Onicha Business School organizers of the Onicha City Marathon later this year. He assured that sports infrastructure will also get attention as plans were already underway to develop the Park B section of Oka Township Stadium upgrade of Ekulobia Township Stadium and siting of facility in each of the three senatorial districts and explained that the progress made so far was because Governor Soludo gave his political support to sports to see the sector develop in terms of business and empowerment for youths. The Sports Development Commission chairman called on youths in Anambra State to participate actively in sports as the Governor Soludo administration promises to provide environment for them to take their talents to the world stage. It was double celebrations for the Anambra State Director, National Rotation Agency, Barrister Charles Mwaji, as he bows out of civil service as a, after meritorious service years, as well as celebrated his birthday anniversary. The event held at the state headquarters of NOA in Oka attracted officials of the agency from across the 21 local government areas of the state and retired staff of the agency and friends and well wishers. Queen and World Father report taken from here. In his farewell speech, the outgoing state director, Barrister Mwaji, recalled the efforts of the agency in making a mark in shaping positively the attitude of Ndianambra towards government programs and policies. He appreciated the staff, especially the field staff, whom he described as food soldiers of the agency, for trying their best in ensuring that the behavior of Anambra citizens remains above board and called for more assistance from government at all levels to ensure that the positive attitudinal change is maintained. I will keep commending the entire staff of NOA 
particularly the field staff, to say the fact. NOA needs to be assisted in an In his remarks, the incoming acting state director, Sir Joseph Uchendo, highlighted the principles for which Barrister Wardi was known for, including his robust implementation of programs, timely submission of reports to state government and national headquarters, improvement of staff welfare, continuous intellectual empowerment of staffs, among others, assuring him that his labor will not be in vain. Sir Joseph also assured the staff that his his own administration will not only sustain the principles left behind by the outgoing director, but with their support, he will make tremendous impact in the tax before them, as well as working with Governor Chukuma Soludo to build a prosperous and secure homeland in Anambra State. Sitting from the scene today is someone who has lived up to the key principles of civil service. In his goodwill message, the state commander of war against indiscipline, WAI Brigade, Mr. Francis Nwoye, recalled the efforts of the outgoing state director in bringing WAI to its present level and promised that they will continue to make him proud in discharge of their duties. A goodwill message from the Welfare Association of the Agency, read by Mr. Tangod Obidegu, said that Barrister Nwoye is a motivator and a role model to the staff and charge staffs of the agency to remain resolute in the discharge of their duties as well as give full support to the incoming acting state director. On behalf of retired staff of NOA, a former deputy director, planning, research and strategy, Dr. Dennis Eke Mezier described Barista Mwaji as a man who is not daunted by challenges and noted that it is a thing of happiness to go out of civil service in good health. Cutting of birthday cake, drama presentation and refreshment added color to the event. Still to come in the news tonight, federal government holds national dialogue on education. Israeli settlers attack six Palestinians in occupied West Bank. Here's a special message. Governor Chukuma Soludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Nambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. The news returns after the break. A peak protein breakfast gets me to a great day. How do I know? Because my daddy goes to his work feeling good and always with a smile. Mommy is always filled with confidence. My sister is always in tune. And for me, learning new things becomes absolute fun. Because all day and every day, the peak goes on. Start your day with a peak protein breakfast peak. Back to the rest of the news. Stakeholders in education from the Anglophone countries have converged on Abuja to brainstorm on what would what should be done to scale up standard of education in Nigeria and reduce burden of child marriage on education. The one-day program organized by the Federal Ministry of Education in collaboration with other stakeholders in the education sector, including UNICEF, UNESCO, among others, is aimed at identifying gaps in education and providing solutions to them. Equia today has details. Speakers at the National Dialogue harped on the need for strengthening teacher development in Africa. In his speech, the Minister of State for Education, Mr. Goodluck Opia, said that if Nigeria can successfully abridge the data gaps, it will have provided the basic fundamentals for resolving so many issues. The Minister said the federal government is unrelenting in providing the needed opportunity for education for all and to ensure inclusiveness. He emphasized that the President Muhammad Buhari's led administration remains dogged in overcoming the challenges that keep a lot of girls out of school and noted that Nigeria has made significant strides in getting children, especially girls, back into school. If we can successfully abridge the data gaps in Nigeria, we will have provided the basic fundamentals for resolving so many issues. In a lead paper presentation on achieving gender equality through education, 
the Director of International Institute for Capacity Building in Africa, Dr. Quentin Woden, said gender inequality reduces women's expected earnings and as such their human capital wealth. He said that gender inequality also contributes to lack of educational attainment for the girl child and a high prevalence of child marriage and early childbearing. There's a whole um, ecosystem that contributes to that overall gender inequality that is so detrimental to Nigeria's development. The Permanent Secretary Ministry of Education, Dr. David Adeja, represented by the Director of Basic Education, Dr. Mrs. Olatunji Davis, said education is in crisis globally, hence the need for heightened focus towards making education work, which according to him, has been gaining momentum after the transforming education summit in United Nations Assembly last year. Earlier, the Director of Educational Planning, Research and Development, Federal Minister of Education, Abuja, Mr. Adeleye Adoye, said the objective of the National Dialogue is to, among other things, facilitate learning, build capacity and profess solutions to glaring needs in the country's education sector. In Abuja, Princess Ekwi Ajide reporting. On business news, the Central Bank of Nigeria has barred banks and other financial institutions seeking a conversion license for ex from expanding or reducing their current banking network in its new draft guidelines. So the CBN discloses this uh, in a circular to banks and other financial institutions, which was titled Regulatory Guidelines for Change of Operational License for Banks and Other Financial Institutions in Nigeria, and dated 28th March 2023. The draft was signed by a director of financial policy and regulation department, Chibuzo Ifobi. The circular stated that under these guidelines, the following prohibitions and restrictions shall apply to eligible banks and OFIs applying for conversion or recategorization, other than that a bank or OFI should not, pending when the application is determined, expand or reduce its current banking network. The CBN stated that due to increasing requests from financial institutions to either upgrade or convert to other license regimes, the draft guidelines aimed to provide clarity to eligible financial institutions on regulatory requirements. From the foreign scenes, at least six Palestinians have been injured after being attacked by Israeli settlers in the Palestinian town of Hurawa, south of Nablus, in the occupied West Bank. The town is in the site of a settler rampage last month. They killed one Palestinian and injured hundreds of others before Israel Finance Minister Basilel Smotrich called for it to be wiped out. Monday night's attack came a few hours before a Palestinian man succumbed to gunshot wounds he sustained during a large-scale Israeli military raid last month in Nablus. Eleven Palestinians were killed and more than 100 others were injured in what was described as a massacre. And from sports, President Joko Widodo of Indonesia has, says he will send the country's football association chief to, for talks with FIFA about its hosting of the on the 20 World Cup after the draw was next full in protest over Israeli participation. The two countries do not have formal diplomatic relations and support from the Palestinian cause in the world's most populous Muslim-majority nation. President Widodo said he had dispatched Indonesian Football Association head and Minister for State-Owned Enterprises Eric Thohor to Switzerland, where FIFA is headquartered as certain certainty swells over the competition's location. Fixtures for the 24-nation tournament beginning in May were due to be chosen on Friday in Bali, but FIFA cancelled the event without reason or setting a new date. FIFA is yet to comment on the tournament and where it will be held after the draw was next. The Indonesian president said sports and politics should not clash after the calls for Israel to be removed from the tournament. Remember that you can follow news and program on ABS TV from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television Oka. Go on to use, subscribe to our YouTube channel at ABS Television Oka. You can as well join us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now the major points that made the news tonight. 
An Ambra State government has restated commitment to youth skill acquisition programs. An Ambra State Assembly has resumed plenary after election break. Federal government has held national dialogue on education in Abuja. And finally, we told you from the foreign scenes that Israeli settlers have attacked six Palestinians in occupied West Bank. Governor Chiku Masoludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. That's all on the news tonight. My name is Uche Chuku Ibana. Good night.